So Christian Bale, Mr. Dark Knight himself, Batman, Bruce Wayne, is here at the European premiere of The Dark Knight Rises, reprising his role for the third time and uh, working with Christopher Nolan once again. Of course, he was in The Prestige with Nolan once before, and now this is it. We find out exactly what's in store for Batman. We know the legend ends. Now, apparently, Christian, uh, Christopher Nolan has always said that it was only ever going to be three movies, and he wrote exactly what happens to Batman on day one when he was writing Batman Begins he always knew the scene and how things would end for the Batman trilogy and we will find out exactly what's in store for Batman in the Dark Knight Rises in cinemas on Friday here live at the European premiere of the Dark Knight Rises it's Christian Bale Here he is at the Dark Knight Rises premiere. It's the man everybody's been waiting to see. People have been here waiting to see Christian Bale since 9 o'clock yesterday morning. And finally, it's arrived. The Dark Knight is actually here. We've been waiting even longer to see the movie. Four years since the Dark Knight to the Dark Knight Rises. And this really is the Bruce Wayne story. This is where we find out exactly how Bruce Wayne gets back out of Wayne Manor, the recluse he's become to become the Dark Knight and how he's going to rise. Of course, in this movie, it's all about facing the nemesis of Bane and also another arch enemy that actually seems to have a little more in common with Catwoman. Now, she's never referred to as Catwoman in the movie, but Anne Hathaway, we're hoping to see her here very soon, live in Leicester Square at the Dark Knight premiere. In the meantime, I give you Christian Bale. Joining the cast as Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, please give a huge welcome to the Academy Award-nominated actress, Anne Hathaway!
Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined right now at the European premiere of The Dark Knight Rises by the one and only Mr. Tom Hardy! Tom Hardy, how are you? The rain is falling, but it's been quite a warm welcome this evening, has it not? It's an amazing turnout. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I, think, I think they're all very happy to be here. Now, people often say it's more fun to play a villain than it is a hero. You are clearly the villain of the piece. Tell us whether that's true and what it was like playing Bane. I enjoy playing a villain, so um, I definitely got a villain this time. Yeah? yeah. Really? You never felt that you wanted to be a bit heroic? Um, not really, no. I like being a villain, actually. I like doing what I want to do and, and, uh, and, and not you know, towing the line. He is certainly a villain, and he's a very smart villain, as well as very big. Now, we'd seen you in Warrior, and uh, you were big in that. Just exactly how much beefing up, let's say, did you need to do for this film? Well, it was the same again, and then and then another half a stone, so a bit more a bit more fat and no cardio, and uh, yeah. And having that much muscle was that something you thought? Do you know what? I'm going to stay like this. No, absolutely not. I look like the uh, the Pilbury Doughboy, whatever it's called. <laughs> the Oreo cookie look. Interesting. Now, uh, obviously, um, working with Christopher Nolan uh, again on this movie after you worked with him on Inception. Tell us about what it was like working with him, and obviously on this, his final Batman movie. Look, with Chris Nolan, it's amazing. Um, I love working with Chris Nolan. Uh, <clears throat> he's, uh, he has an, an incredible handle on the epic, as well as creating an intimate environment for, for actors to work with. So it's like working on a small independent, but at the same time, it's enormous. Look at the turnout. And obviously, when he uh, cast you in the movie, he prepared you for the fact that you were going to be wearing a mask permanently in the film. On a level of acting, just how difficult is it to work without your mouth in vision permanently behind this mask? It's good, actually. You know, I enjoy a mask because it allows me to have a bit of a distance, like, you know, like an emo fringe <laughs> from, from, from a camera, from an audience. So on the one hand, it's really good to work with and, and, and it opens a lot of doors and opportunities also for various artists to, to dub me and, uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, now, uh, people, uh, the, the expectation for this movie is, is already at uh, fever pitch. Without giving too much away, what exactly can audiences expect in terms of scale and, and, and the emotional content of this final part of the trilogy? Wow. Well, I think they're definitely going to get their money's worth on this one because, uh, epically, it's, it's the biggest of the three and uh, it's, it's, the, it's a cycle of the three as well. So it brings everything back around in, in one big, happy sort of circle like that. But a much bigger circle because they spent a lot more money on that than me doing this. Uh, Tom Hardy, always a pleasure speaking to you. Have a great night, fella. Thank you very much, you too. Anne Hathaway.